starting with the newest addition, one of the newest additions, anyway, uh, Yusuf Gatewood. <laughs> the new regent of New Orleans, Danielle Campbell as Davina. <laughs> the unofficial Michelson brother, Charles Michael Davis. I actually allotted extra time for screaming, so honestly, just go for it. Creator and executive producer, Julie Pleck. The man who will break your heart and then rip it out and probably eat it, Joseph Morgan. The brother with a suit for every occasion, Daniel Gillies as Elijah. Yeah. Nice jacket. Yeah, give it up for this jacket. Huh? <laughs> Out of a suit and into a smoking hot jacket. I know, right? The one time he's not wearing a suit. The she-wolf, who is currently more wolf than she, Phoebe Tonkin. Executive producer, Michael Narducci. And everybody's favorite token human, Leah Pipes. <laughs> now, I do have a lot of questions about the past season that we all enjoyed, but I think uh, I really need to address something that we just saw in that video, which was new, I believe. Julia and Michael, who the hell were those two people, and how can we make them dead? <laughs> they actually, you know, it was a scene that we shot for the season finale uh, at the end of last year. We wanted to kind of have a little tag at the very end that said, oh, there's danger coming in a new form. And then when we saw the episode, we preferred it ending on Klaus's emotional moment, um, sort of just teeing up that there were new enemies to come. And then when we hadn't started shooting this year yet, uh, and we, you know, you love to come to Comic Con and show off new footage, but we didn't have any. And so we thought, hmm, how can we show the audience like what is in the works? And we thought, oh, there's that scene. So uh, we used it, and it's just a hint of our douche. It's a little hint of uh, what's to come in terms of the new villains, maybe. Well, yeah, we talked a lot about how the Michaelsons have been around for a thousand years, and somewhere along the way, uh, they probably turned a bunch of people into vampires. And those vampires know that if an original dies, as we saw with Finn and we saw with Cole, an entire sire line will be wiped out. So what perspective do those sired vampires have, all of them, the remaining three sire lines, what do they think about the continued existence of the Michelson family? So that's, that's the seed for season three. Very cool. Does that mean that the, the Dahlia, Esther, all of that is kind of, that chapter is now closed? We're kind of not focusing on the parents anymore? Well, the beauty of it is, is that the, the Michelsons were able to vanquish their parents and their evil, nasty aunties. And, um, and so now they get to experience what it's like to be this so-called parent themselves of their, of their first line of sired vampires. And so the children are coming to town with, uh, with an axe to grind. Cool. Now, I know you guys have not gone into, you've like started a little bit, but you haven't gone into full-fledged production on the new season with everybody, you know, filming. Is there something, do you guys have like a tradition when you all go back to Atlanta to, to film? I'm, I'm thinking like karaoke, some kind of bonding thing. <laughs> Joseph is in charge of social activities for the original. <laughs> all right, so I organized a, a, a gathering and then, and then cancelled it the day after. <laughs> and they won't let me forget it. So. That was swiftly followed by Phoebe Tonkin inviting us. To oh, really yeah. Close. What happened there? And then cancelling the day after as well. <laughs> I was invited to a party with Daniel Gillies and Scott Baio, and then you didn't show up? I did cancel that last night, unfortunately. <laughs> Charles was in charge. <laughs> Scott Baio, who, of course, will be a vampire in season three. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, going to the show, we've seen uh, Klaus and Haley kind of trying the, the co-parenting thing. Uh, it did not really go so well, as we all saw. Um, how is Klaus going to kind of be as a, as a parent without, without Haley around? Well, you know, 
Uh, before he alienated his entire family by toasting Elijah's girlfriend and, um, <laughs> and, and, and cursing the woman he was in love with. Um, Klaus survived sort of under the umbrella of Elijah's protection and forgiveness, I suppose. And so Eli Elijah was always a voice of reason and Haley was always there to battle it out with him. So I would say badly. He, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna do badly as a, as a single parent. You know, and I think he knows he's kind of messing it up, but he's trying, at least he's trying, you've got to give him that. Well, Even if he's warping the mind of his young daughter before she's uttered even a syllable. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, I imagine he, he can always compel, you know, a few dozen nannies, but he does have Elijah there to kind of help him co-parent. I'm thinking, like, shared schedules, midnight feedings, who's doing what? It's like... We, we both wake up when the baby's crying, and it's like, are you, are you going to get her or I think I'm going to be here. Yeah, it's going to be me. All right, I'll get her. I'm going to do the graveyard <laughs> shift. I know that all too well. Yeah. But, you know, we've we got to remember, too, Freya's going to be doing the lion's share of, uh, of the work. Oh, yeah, she, she can she, do she, it. She, she, there she, you go. Know, she's she's, she's Fre yeah, no, 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 but come on. Like, Freya's, Freya's Switzerland at this moment That's in time. True. I think for both of us to be in there, it's just, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Freya, you know, I, I think Riley is a great addition to the show. Uh, you know, it's 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 got to be kind of tough coming into such a, a tumultuous family and uh, kind of finding her way. So how how is that character kind of kind of fit in season three, and how is Riley fitting in with you guys? I think Riley owned it. I mean, she felt to me like a Michelson right from the beginning. Uh, very strong, uh, very intense, and you know, twenty five percent batshit insane. Uh, and very, very great addition to the family. I, I think Klaus made a calculated decision when Dahlia told him that uh, she would be needed to raise this child because she was a firstborn Michelson witch, and without Dahlia, hope might go a little bit off course. And Klaus said, no, there's no way I'm going to let my baby be taken by this witch. So he made sure that she was taken down and then invited and made peace with his sister, and brought her into the family. So she has a very important part to play in this family. And, uh, and I think Daniel's absolutely right. The brothers are estranged, but Freya, who has wanted a family for a thousand years, is coming into that compound and she's gonna live there and she wants for there to be peace in the family. And they're gonna need to find some way to deal with one another given what's coming. Well, and I think anytime you bring somebody in under the umbrella of the Michelson family, um, or even really within the cast itself, you know, you're always sort of like, how's this going to work? And is this person going to be, you know, are they going to fit in? And what's beautiful about Riley is that she just is one of those great personalities and great, you know, wonderful spirits that she just kind of dropped right in and, and made herself at home. And, and uh, we wish, she, actually, she was here. She's in Atlanta with her mom. Yeah, it clicked right from the beginning. You know, when, when we first did a scene with her, she walked right between Klaus and Elijah in the graveyard and kind of threatened us both, put us both in our places. We're like, okay, she can... She can play I wanted her off the set. I said, get her out of here. <laughs> he said, listen, get her I, out. I, I feel extremely threatened by this actress. Uh, but, you know, despite his protests, we kept her. And then, you know, she, she told the story of her childhood with Dahlia, and so then we got to see a little emotional side from Freya, and she rocked that as well. And so I think at that point, everyone was like, hey, can she stay? I think special. we should only talk about Freya. For this Any more family. questions about Freya? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I, I, I have to go back to Klaus and Haley for a minute. I feel like I've always viewed them as sort of like a, like a really bitter divorced couple, and they have to share this child. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if they were to go in front of like a judge, like supernatural Judge Judy, let's say, and, and argue their, their case for custody, who do you think uh, would, would get that baby? Well, firstly, I think it would probably be Jerry Springer if they were going to go on like, a relationship <laughs> television show. Who would get custody? Ooh, is that the question? I, I don't uh, Probably Haley. You're awful. <laughs> As a matter of fact. I, I mean, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> because she's got a point. <laughs> Although I will say that I think Haley, um, you know, for her whole life she's wanted family and she never had parents of her own. So I think no matter how bad class is to Haley, she's still going to want to create a, a kind of normal family dynamic for her daughter. So she always will want Hope to have a mum and dad. So they're going to have to at least be in the same room together, I think. Yeah, I think the struggle is what's going to um, benefit Hope ultimately because each of them believes they're doing the right thing for her and, and they 
you know, especially, well, Klaus believes he's doing it for the greater good. He's doing all these terrible things to protect his daughter. But I think while Haley was still in human form and able to argue with him, there was a, a nice struggle. And out of that struggle came the decisions of how to raise the do their daughter. But, you know. There is, in fact, a custody fight very early on in the season that's very violent, <laughs> but uh, does result in, in, in a decision on who should really be in possession and t taking care of that baby. So it's funny that you should ask there. Oh, I, that's a good one. Um, now, it's a good thing we have Cammie around because I feel like this baby, when she grows up, is gonna need so much therapy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you would not believe. Uh, do you, are, you, are you prepared for that? Are you prepared to kind of sit, sit grown-up hope down and, and really explain what's going on? Well, I think she'll have an advantage having such a uh, complicated relationship with Hope's father. Um, she'll be like, I know where all of this is crum coming from, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Cammie has her degree now. She's Her first client is, is Klaus, which I feel like if she can solve that problem, she can pretty much solve any problem, anyone's problem. So, yeah. yeah. I feel like there's a little conflict of interest thing there, but we'll, we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have to say, I was kind of hoping that we would have like a high chair at the end of this table for at least one of the babies. Aww. A little, maybe like a little microphone. Um, who who kind of works best with with the babies on set? Uh, oh. yeah, Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe. Phoebe. There was no hesitation there. Yeah. Oh, I work with them so much. They're so cute. They're twins. I don't know if everyone knew that, but yeah, there's two babies, two baby hopes. Yeah. And, I think and occasionally other babies. And bring, yeah, and when they, when they, when those two babies are on another movie, or they, yeah. they're, they're booked, you know, we have to bring <laughs> in the, 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 the sort of. And we have, and then Chucky. Chucky. Yeah, the most terrifying fake the baby. The frightening rubber baby. Yeah. <laughs> we have, we have like it's the American sniper heavy, baby. Weirdly, right? <laughs> yeah. American not, it's sniper not an baby. inexpensive. That's a fake, fake baby. baby. It is like the most expensive fake baby in the world. It's like we should name the price tag, should we? But it's a very, very expensive. What's nine, ten thousand dollars fake baby? Yeah, unbelievable. And like. The ugliest baby you've ever seen. <laughs> it's like little foot will dangle out of the <laughs> of, of the bunting the wrapping, and you'll be like, <laughs> what is, what is gives that? me nightmares <laughs> just thinking about it. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> on the flip side, I feel like Hope is uh, maybe one of the cutest babies I have ever seen on television. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. and that goes for all all of the Hopes. Uh, was what was like the casting process like for that? Were you like, oh no, not this baby, no, <laughs> next. <laughs> Yes, rejection starts early. Actually, the original, um, am I mistaken, the baby hope in the funeral dream sequence was actually um, the child of our craft service guy, right? Uh -huh. Um, who was, had a, basically a four-month-old and said, hey, you know, want to look at my kid? And then you can't say no to the craft service guy. <laughs> That'd be so awkward. Like, no, your child's not good enough. Um, but... But she was beautiful, and um, and then then it was just about uh, honestly and we choosing replaced pictures. Her. <laughs> yes, well then you know, no one should put a child into acting. Uh, <laughs> and it was just pictures. We're like cute baby pictures. There it was you go. actually like the best afternoon at work ever. They had this room, and there was like six sets of twins. And it was just like, and Phoebe I and I went back there and like, can yeah. we hold all of you? Then? Yeah, like exploding ovaries. Just like, <laughs> we were but like the other thing is, you have to also be like, some of you aren't gonna be here yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. We held all of them. We were taking photos. Yeah, and, yeah. Some some really cute. <laughs> Sorry. Now I know that uh, Haley is not gonna be around necessarily all the time to be with Hope, but you can confirm that she will. We will see Phoebe Tonkin in the flesh. Yes. Yes, you will. That is. Good. I hope. <laughs> I hope you will. Have you? I know you guys. You guys haven't started shooting yet. Have you all seen like the first scripts? Three. Oh, wow, first three. First so you, three. So you do know you're just being KG. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah we're strict okay. orders. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Who's gonna kind of lead the charge in in getting getting uh, Haley back? I mean, I I feel like it should be Elijah, but I don't know. I would say it's Elijah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it has to be. Who else is that? You know. He's going to be holding a lot more coats out in the wilderness for her to yeah. <laughs> shelter beneath. Yeah, coats. But no, <laughs> the, the, the coats are going to become exponentially smaller and smaller. <laughs> so this is going to be a tiny jacket. Yeah. It's just going to be a thong. <laughs> Not even. A false moustache. <laughs> He's kinky. <laughs> Uh, what can you kind of say about that relationship? Because, you know, I know, you know, Haley is a married woman, and I, I do believe in the sanctity of, you know, werewolf hybrid unions, but obviously there is still something there between Haley and Elijah, so what are, what are your kind of thoughts on that? I mean, 
you know, the one thing I can say about Elijah is that he has a monumental patience. You know, I, I think he'll just wait it out. He'll wait for Jackson to die. <laughs> no, I, I mean, he's, he's always going to be there for her when, you know, when she needs him, I think. Uh, but uh, Although his patience with Klaus has run out. Well, that's, it's a thousand years of it. He's only had like, what? Well, I'm just yeah, saying. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Two years, two years. You know. No? Um, <laughs> where were we? I can't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> I think we can move on. I think, I, I think he's, uh, he, he's going to remain devoted to her through whatever. And to, and to that child. Oh, well, I'm glad we didn't move on because that was beautiful. Uh, going back to Cammy for a little bit, uh, she and Klaus shared some, some pretty interesting words in that finale, uh, hinting at, at maybe a, a really strong connection between them, some sort of soulmate situation. Uh, wh what is it about her and, and his connection that kind of really gets him to really open up? Because he's, he's kind of a, a cagey guy. Yeah, I think, you know, we were just talking about this today, actually, um, uh, and Narducci was wonderful enough to explain to me, like, wh what's going on with my character, which sometimes I need, but um, so I think she she saw her brother uh, go into such darkness, and it, it, her twin brother, who's a mirror of her, so it was, you know, a very dark experience for her, and she's kind of, she has darkness in her as well, and I think he sees that, and, um, and she sees that in him and maybe sees in him the, the parts of herself she's repressing and so um, I think there is a an, an untapped darkness of Cammy that we potentially will be seeing some of. And, and I think at the same time Klaus sees that darkness in her and sees someone highly intelligent who's vulnerable and human and fragile and yet sees him with sympathetic eyes and looks at him not as a monster but as a complex soul and that's something that he doesn't necessarily get all the time and doesn't necessarily maybe think he deserves completely, so there's some attraction there on she his part. She sees the good in him. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Haley. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. There was no, there was silence in the audience. No one liked that. No one liked that. No. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about something that uh, they will like, or I mean, it'll make you guys sad. Apologies in advance. But I feel like this season, more than last season, and even more than like, you know, on the Vampire Diaries, I feel like you guys just were so ruthless and killed so many fan favorite characters who we, we all miss so much. Uh, were there any, I mean, I can, I can list a few of them if you want. You know, Aiden, <laughs> Cole... I'm actually going to stop listening to them because it's making me sad. Uh, take us into the writer's room. Like, what, who, what, which death was sort of the Who's one to blame you, is what yes. you're asking. Who's, Who's to blame? blame and who, you know, who, were, were there any sort of deaths that you guys really fought over? And, and... <laughs> <laughs> Rhetorical question. I mean, typical I day, we're sitting in there talking about how much we love our actors and our cast is phenomenal and we're just kind of chilling out and then the angel of death walks in <laughs> and uh, says, I feel like killing off so-and-so. And then we, we figure that out. They have a big roulette yeah. wheel with yeah. all of our names I, on it. I do, I do. And they I spin was, it. I say, we, we, need, we need a good death. It's time yeah. for a good yeah. death. It's, it's time for oh. somebody to go. Aiden. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You were good. Um, no, honestly, it's funny because this year, you know, we had, just from a logistical point of view, it's, you know, Daniel Sharman, who was so wonderful as Cole. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> beyond. <laughs> uh, got a job or something like you know we had to deal with the logistics of actors like getting other different opportunities or, or or chasing you know their dreams in like saskatchewan and 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 the middle east and god knows where um which a lot of actors on our show choose to do go chase those dreams but um <laughs> but really for me like it's like the best death is the death that you don't want to do you know it's the death that it's you know it took kevin two years to convince me to kill Aunt Jenna, you know? And I, and, and Vampire Diaries, like, I was so determined not to ever kill Aunt Jenna. And then finally one day, like, somebody pitched it in a way, and I went, oh, that's terrible, I love it, you know? <laughs> so, it's, um, it's, it's the deaths that you, that make you hurt inside, and I think Aiden certainly was, was one of those for us. Yeah. Uh, mention, uh, going back to, to Cole, who we mentioned, uh, I know, you know, we, we almost got him back in the finale, and then we didn't. Uh, I think some of you here are to blame for that little uh, switch up. <laughs> but uh, what are the odds that we're going to see him again? And in which body would we see him? And I'm admittedly, like, a little, a little confused about how the, the, body, the body swapping works. <laughs> uh, well, no, we're going to see Cole, the character Cole, as played by Nathaniel Bazalik. 
right away. Yeah, in flashbacks um, early in the season, we're going to kind of get a you know glimpse at uh, the whole original family about 10 years after they were turned and see what their life is like as they've been struggling to like adapt to this new part of themselves. And, and, uh, and we, we may even, if, if we're lucky, see a little glimpse of Finn as well. Yeah, I think Davina still wants Cole back, and, and she has a lot of power with these witches, so we'll have to explore what her per perspective is there. And then Freya still has Finn in an amulet, and we know that Vincent's body is a decent vehicle for that soul, so will we see uh, Yusuf playing two different roles this season? He does it so well. And done before. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, I'll applaud you. I'll applaud you. <laughs> <laughs> nice, a nice building applause. I like that a lot. Uh, Yusuf, all the way down there. Uh, you are, at least on this, on this panel right now, the, the newest cast member. So how's it been for you to kind of join? And this is your first Comic-Con. No, this is my first Comic-Con. This com Thank you. Uh, Comic-Con, it, it's been a humbling experience. I had no idea that I was going to be sitting in a conference with this many people here. And um, just the, the love and the energy that I get from the supporters of the show, that we all get from the supporters of the show, has been like nothing else I've experienced. Um, so I'm so uh, appreciative to be here for this. Um, yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you. How good is he on our show? How good is Yusuf so good. on the show? So, so good. Thank you so much. And of course, he's going to be kind of a sort of a mentor figure to Davina. Uh, do you know or have any idea kind of how that's going to going to work? I know she doesn't really she doesn't really want someone telling her what to do. Yeah, and I don't know that she needs anybody to tell her what to do. I mean, this this young lady has a lot of uh, 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 ideas that she can um, bring to fruition on her own. But um, I think this season we're going to see Vincent try to uh, uh, be a mentor f mentor for her. Whether or not she's accepting of the idea, what remains to be seen. We'll see. Of course. Well, Danielle, I feel like of everybody up here, you're definitely one of the people whose character has kind of changed the most over the, the two seasons. I feel like you were this, you know, uh, this little witch that was like kept up in an attic, and now you're this like badass regent who's just like m making threats. Uh, how, how has that kind of that sort of growth been for you uh, as like as an actress? Um, you know, I think as well as as an actor, I, I love it. I mean, it's uh, what you really want. It's I've gotten to experience so many different arcs, and I've really gotten to grow with the character. And you see her at the very beginning of season one; she's scared, and she's um, people are after her, and she's locked in an attic. And then now she's leading people, and she's strong. And it's such a cool thing to be able to play such a character that's gone through so much. And then um, uh, I, I guess it's there's nothing more I could have asked for. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I know you know everybody loved the relationship between Davina and Cole. Yeah. I think uh, Nathaniel even posted a, a picture on Twitter, uh, July 4th, I think it was, so you guys definitely were not filming, but it was, uh, I think, got a hashtag Colvina. He knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> Sherman did that? No. Uh, Nathaniel? Nathaniel? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look. Uh, one of those Coles. One of those. <laughs> the Cole we did not see you with. Um, how do you kind of feel about... Wait, bring back all wait, who is Chase's character? Oliver. Bring Oliver. Back Oliver. Bring back Ollie. Uh, no, who wants to see Oliver back? <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, who's Oliver? Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Give back to Danielle. Back to Danielle. Um, you know, we, we loved watching you with Daniel Sharman. Uh, do, or do you feel like Davina could handle another love interest, or is she fully kind of devoted to getting Cole back and forsaking all others? Um... <laughs> You know, I think, I think Cole definitely had a special place in her heart, and I think she'll always really care about him. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, I think she, she's tried to bring him back so many times, and I think she's not, I don't know, I don't think she's going to stop. I mean, I, I think I'm at, um, it depends on what the writers end up wanting to do. <laughs> but no, I think, I think he's, she's, he's been really important to her. He's the first person who really understood her, and... Um, I think she's, she and him had a special connection, which is why they were able to do so much with their magic. Yeah, and in talking about failed relationships, I feel like we have to talk to Charles Michael Davis over there, because you have... You know, we, wait, are we talking about my personal life now? What's going on here? We can if We've already you want done to, this on I, many talk shows. I'm talking about Marcel. Oh, I feel okay. like we, we've Let's seen him with, uh, with quite a few ladies, uh, Rebecca being the, the most recent, and I feel like uh, now she's, she's gone, she's, he's single, she's coming back. Well, she's, she's somewhere gone. out there, yeah. 
I hope she comes back, whatever body, I don't care. <laughs> I like I like both models. You say that now and then she ta- you know she still Hello, gets a- Marcel. <laughs> I'm finally back in my new well, body. Oh, look Eighty six too- years old. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give it's us a-, a kiss. <laughs> uh, you devil. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> I'll be playing her. By the way. <laughs> In a sort of Monty Python-esque. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If we can't get Judy Dench, then right. I want you. <laughs> I'm second choice for the yeah. Um, And in talking about relationships, you know, it's not just about romantic relationships. I think we all love kind of the the female characters when they can all get together and and just sort of have their their nice moments. There haven't been too many nice moments lately. It's been kind of crazy in New Orleans. But uh, can you you kind of assure us that we're going to get some nice, you know, friendly moments between the girls this season? None. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Uh, No, actually, you know, there's a a good faction of writers in our writers' room um, who really believe that the female relationships and friendships are as strong and as important to the show as the supernatural stuff and as, as the bromance and all that uh, and the romance. And they fight really hard to find ways to put characters together like like um, Haley and uh, <laughs> me? me and Leah, yeah. who like, we drink wine with and hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we figure out ways to, you know, to develop those bonds. It's also fun. It's lighter. It's a lighter tone, a lighter energy, which the show needs every now and then to, to kind of brighten and sparkle it up a little bit. Leah on the train yesterday was pitching to one of our great writers, Karina, and she goes, I have this like, great idea. It's like Haley and Cammy, and they're, they're on the couch, and they're in their sweatpants, and they're drinking wine. I was like, you're like, we, are you like Tuesday? Like, you can't put that at work. <laughs> No, but I want us to do it like always. We're so good at it. Yeah. That's where our real talent lies. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally watch that show for the record, just, just yeah. so it's clear. Um, now, you guys are moving to a new night this fall. I'm sure you guys are excited about that. Thursday nights after the Vampire Diaries. Yes. Yes. Um, I would, I would kind of kick myself if I didn't take the opportunity to ask if you guys are potentially thinking about, you know, any crossover situations happening. <laughs> Michael Narducci should answer that question. Yeah. I thought what you were going to say is now that you're on at nine o'clock, or things are going to get a little bit, a little bit more adult. Yeah. Well, that too, are they? Well, some, some, some clothes come. Are, are things going to get a bit more adult? No, sexy. Yeah. Adult? How much more adult can they yeah. get? Like, I think they're going to get pretty adult. Yeah. Nice. I think some people are going to show up from the past who are potential sexy time. Yeah. You are dodging the question. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Well, the truth about crossovers is. <laughs> <laughs> I just wait. I have to give context to this because earlier today somebody asked Andy asked a question, and I said I said to all of America, which I'll repeat, I love crossovers. Narducci won't do them, and which is a joke, of course. But he's been mad at me all day. So this was your forum to to get no, back. No, I, I think this way. I said this about crossovers once that like. A, you know, I'm a writer and producer on the originals. I have my sandbox of cast and characters who I can play with. And that's who I am focused on all the time. And I love those cast of characters. I get very defensive yeah. about yeah. them and what's going on with them. And I often feel sometimes for serialized shows like ours, which are heavily serialized, as opposed to something like Arrow and Flash, where they could team up and fight a criminal and then be done fighting that criminal and move on, I feel like what would happen if we did a crossover is there would be a crossover, there would be a lot of backstory, there would be a lot of catch-up, and then the characters would have to part ways again and at the moment that they parted ways again, I think people would be disappointed and angry all over again. So I fear that no matter what we do with a crossover, it wouldn't kind of live up to the expectations, the high expectations that some people have. So I focus on our show and wait for my fearless leader to tell me, actually, Mike, I have the Vampire Diaries and the originals, and we're going to do a crossover with both of them, and we're going to bring in the people from Containment, too, because I am a god. <laughs> And there you have it. <laughs> well, well done. Uh, now we're going to go to audience questions uh, in just a little bit, but first I want to do something fun. Uh, I know it's not the holidays, and I know we don't have a, like a big-ass bonfire in front of us, but I thought it would be kind of fun if everybody uh, kind of thinks about a, a wish they would like for their character in the future, and oh, you can just nice. throw it in the imaginary bonfire. Oh. Well, I'm a human, so I just want to stay alive. That's my only one. <laughs> 
Good answer. Oh, oh shit. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit. I have shit. wishes for everybody, but I, I don't get to have. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Michael and Julie giving. It's like that's like asking the genie what what I, wish I, it. I, wants. I do wish We're for the Julie. Wish I do wish for Julie that that uh, Supernatural Judge Judy becomes her next spinoff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and exploding ovaries is the title of Daniel <laughs> Billy's next memoir. Done. Done. I'm in. Um, you know, I think the, the a wish for Haley would be that Hope can live a normal, happy existence. I think be what she would want the most. That's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's very I'm ambitious. Done. I think for Elijah, I would, I mean, other than wishing that his girlfriends would not be incinerated by Oh, come brother. on. Well, come on. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, well, that's a, I'm not letting that one go easily. Well, I so like just, that much. So, uh, I, I, I would wish for him, oh, man. I wish for him. I, I actually, I am actually wishing for something dark. Like I, 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 I sort of would wish for a, a great division between the brothers before reconciliation. That's <laughs> <laughs> the best. So that's how it's going to be. <laughs> I want my wishes for Elijah to wear more racing jackets. <laughs> racing jackets. That's what that is, right? <laughs> Sorry, I totally misread that. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I wish everyone would just do what Klaus says because he's all his right. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. It's for the greater good. Come on, get on board with his plans. <laughs> everything will be all right in the end. Not everyone will be all right in the end, but everything will be all right in the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just destroy wishes, so I should... I should <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Can I take your wish? Um, I wish Marcel would cross over. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh. Well, let's try and drop the cross over. Well, I wish for more of your cleavage. Yes. I wish for... Oh, there it is. Yes. Yeah. If we can get some dollar bills. <laughs> let's see some ones. <laughs> Trying to make some money out here. Oh. Somebody put on some uh, some Usher, some slow jam. Uh, yeah. I have a twenty. What can we get for like a twenty? <laughs> Break it up. Break it up. You won't even take the money. I'll do it for free. Break it into ones and let's make it rain. <laughs> gonna... I, I can make it drizzle one twenty. If I throw loose change at you, can I make it hail? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Next subject. Um, Davina is a witch, and I, I think I think it'd be really cool if she could fly. So whether it's a broomstick, <laughs> I still think it'd be really cool. So that's what I'm gonna say. That's a good one. Uh, mine's pretty selfish. I hate shaving, so I wish we could work something in so he, uh, Vincent can grow like a huge beard. <laughs> no. <yeah>. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I changed my mind. I want superpowers as well. Yes. Uh, three one foot long retractable adamantium claws from each hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Why is the camera on me? <laughs> I want to fly. I want to see. The, I want to see these guys fly. I want, to, I want them to charging up walls, and we don't have the budget for that, do we? I want. To, I want to, oh, yeah. I want to see more vampire stuff. Why am I wishing again? Yeah. Really <laughs> exhausted my wish. You guys can make as many wishes as you want. This is your made-up tradition. It's, it's raining wishes on you. It's just, yeah, yeah it's it raining. Here it is. It's raining for your wishes. Yeah. It's just God, it's embarrassing. Tee it up. Tee it, tee it tee, up. Tee what up? Tee what up? It's raining. What do you need? The rain of wishes. What do you need What happens rain? when it rains? No, oh, everybody sucks. What, what? We had a competition at the beginning of the Oh, panel. shit. Everybody umbrella. was supposed to use the word umbrella in an answer, and nobody did it but me and Joe. Oh, I just said it. Oh, you just said now. Yeah. Umbrella. Umbrella. <laughs> you can just say it. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. What did we lose? We had the rain, the hail. Oh, so oh, I there. had no idea. <laughs> we so have sorry. dropping hints. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's uh, turn it over to some sorry, audience Julie. questions. <laughs> Oh, hi. Hi, my name is Julia, and first I'd like to say that I love you all, especially Joseph Morgan and Daniel <laughs> Campbell. Oh. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. <laughs> Through a curve there, Daniel L. Campbell. <laughs> 
You're my questions for the whole cast, and it's if you were able to play another role, who would you want to play? Oh. On our show? <laughs> or just in general? Yeah, on the originals. I, I think I would choose Haley, yeah. the, the hybrid female. She's a pretty cool character. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would play Klaus. <laughs> and mind you, probably better. But. <laughs> I don't want to play anybody else. I want to play Elijah. <laughs> if, if I have absolutely had to play someone else, uh, I would play Oliver because <laughs> I, I, I just think he needs to be brought back to the show. And uh, <laughs> hashtag save Ollie. <laughs> Bring him back! <laughs> Oliver. Leave it just showing again. Uh, I would play Elijah because I think I look damn good in a suit. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buttoned up to the navel. <laughs> there we go. I know it's distracting for you, my body. I cannot concentrate. <laughs> I refuse to continue. <laughs> um, I would play Genevieve. I thought she was a really cool character. Yeah, she's a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. 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 Nice, there's some Genevieve fans in the house. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I, I think I might choose Elijah too. I think uh, that's a really cool character that Dan they has both created. Bring, well, bring more to the role. They're just saying. They both quietly believe they can bring more to the role. That's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Not quietly. They're saying it to an audience of like three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Only because of what you've done with it, Dan. Oh, yeah. And, and if, if you could just give him a bit more pizzazz. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Julia. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, wow, that's loud. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> um, my name's Marissa. First, I want to say, Daniel, I watched Saving Hope, and your death killed me. I'm so sorry that you died. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so my question is for Julie and Michael. Um, I was wondering, there's so much violence on the show, and so much adult stuff. And I was wondering if the network or the studio has ever told you, no, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a story about that, don't we, Leah? No, I don't want to tell the story there's, again. There's some things that, that we did that could be shown. So here's the thing. Here's the thing about, about broadcast television is apparently you can... Um, decapitate someone, you can drive a knife into a vampire's skull, you can rip out their heart, you can shove a pencil up their nose, you can um, stab them a million times with glass, but when simulating a sex scene, if there's any movement at all that one would define as thrusting. No from, thrusting. <laughs> Pull back on the thrusting. No thrusting. A, a motion that originates from the hip. <laughs> No, wait, wait, don't show them. Oh, no, we need a demonstration. Yes. It's become the Sebastian Roche. It's difficult because I don't remember thrusting actually being in the script, so that was something that the actors it a, chose. It's a creative choice. We, we brought You know, like, that. look at Charles. You would do the same thing. They chose it. Let me tell again, you, there was, some, there was some excellent, spectacular, simulated, you know, thrusting in the, in the scene that was cut per broadcast standards. Well, I think in the same episode, like 17 people got brutally massacred. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. And it was some of our best thrusting, and oh, I <laughs> can't believe. I hope it makes a special feature. Charles called Leah for some extra rehearsal beforehand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to feel her. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I'm Katie. My question is for Joseph and Daniel Gillies. So Klaus has been really focused on like ruling New Orleans. So if you could rule your own kingdom, where would it be and why? 
New York City. Oh. It's the best city in the world. I just, I'm in, I'm in love with it. I, 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 how about you? I mean London. I, I, it might would be London in like some penthouse overlooking the city, puppeteering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Great question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let's move the show. <laughs> <laughs> I said it before. That's it. Hi, I'm Askyla. Um, I know that between you, there's been a myriad of different supernatural creatures. Uh, Phoebe, I think you've been a werewolf, a witch, a mermaid. Um, in real life, <laughs> in real life, what would you want to be? Um, do you want to, what do you, Leah, you want to start? Well, I always say witches because witches don't have to turn on the full moon and they don't have to be like plagued by vampire they're the demons of vampires. They can just have all the power and really cute outfits. And if I can look more like Daniel Campbell, I'll take it. <laughs> oh. Well, you can answer this uh, I, I don't want to choose. I like being able to get into the shoes of all of them. It's a lot of fun to be anything as a writer. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Thank you. Yeah. Well, actually, I would, I'm going to say a mermaid then. Like, life is better under the sea, and I would be a mermaid. I don't know. I mean, merman. Merman. A merman. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty pervy, so I'd say, like, oh. in, invisibility. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> No, I'm happy where I am. I'm, uh, you know, hybrid, hybrid. Definitely not invisibility. In his, not yeah, in his. Not even, like, a it's character. not actually. It's just a like a, a it's character. It's in line. It's just, invisible man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, definitely, I'm happy where I am. Uh, you know, I, when I joined the show, I was. Uh, I thought I was only going to be a vampire, so I was thrilled to be half werewolf. <laughs> so I'm sticking to my guns. I like being the token human, and I'm just gonna like stay there and then create more mermen <laughs> season three the season of the mermen the next the next spin off you better not come in the water <laughs> the sunshine we shine together I'll be here forever okay roll up <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what was the question? What's Which what is, merman would you like What to is be? going on right now? H2O. What is going on? How, how do I feel about H2O, the show? You have a, you have a photo it. of I, I H2O in your room. I, huh? You have a photo, Charles has a photo of me as a mermaid in his dressing room. <laughs> yeah. This big, next to the piano? Yeah, no, it sits on top of my refrigerator. <laughs> I'm still waiting to get it autographed. <laughs> like, please, please sign that picture and make my day, then I could finally frame it. Um, wait, was there a question? Superhero. What supernatural creature would you be if you could, if you could choose anything? Oh, uh, a, a fire-breathing dragon or um, a, a, a unicorn. <laughs> That's my answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> what about like Donkey from Shrek? <laughs> okay, I think we've gone way off course here. <laughs> Just gonna put my hands up and say. <laughs> um, anybody here ever watched The Adventures of Pete and Pete? Yes. You guys remember Mr. Swirl who disappeared every year summer left? That's who I'd like to be, <laughs> Mr. Swirl from The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Mr. Squirrel. I'm old. Good question. <laughs> Next question. Hi, I'm Katie. And if you were to go to Comic Con on the floor, is there anyone you would dress up as? Daniel, Daniel Gillies. Gillies. <laughs> Daniel Gillies. Let me borrow that Daniel jacket. Gillies. <laughs> or Boba Fat. <laughs> but probably Daniel Gillies. Boba Gillies. <laughs> Combination of the two. Boba Gillies. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Kiana. I just want to say you're all brilliant actors, and this is the only show. It's like I have the test. The next I I watch it to study my test. Ah, <laughs> nice. So my question's for Joseph. Who's his Klaus's favorite sibling, and why? <laughs> <laughs> Well, not, you know, Klaus's favourite, not my favourite, you understand. Uh, Klaus's favourite, I think, is Rebecca. And, <laughs> no, uh, is Rebecca, yeah, he's most protective. Of, and Elijah, of course. Always Elijah, it's not Elijah. <laughs> Not Elijah. Rebecca, because he, he, he's been most protective over her. She's been his, you know, his little sister. He, he, uh, he, I think he feels more sort of parental towards her. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely not <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> he's my personal favorite, but that's another story. <laughs> After the invisibility in the dressing room incident. <laughs> want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hi, I'm Haley, and I wanted to know how you guys would want to die in the show. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's so yeah. good. That's like the best question wow. ever. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. Pretty, nerdy Chicken, can we write this down? <laughs> yeah. I, I know how I want to go. How? Out in a blaze of glory, oh. <laughs> killed by Elijah in a giant sword fight. Ooh. That's it. That's a great answer. Um, Maybe it could be a double sort of like, ah, uh, you stabbed me in the heart, but I stabbed you in the it's, heart. It's true, though. I, I would want to be... Oh, I bloody died at the same time. I'd want to be murdered by Klaus, there I you think. Go. I think I'd want to be finally murdered by, by Klaus. Or, or, or like a mercy killing by Haley. <laughs> <laughs> just like, stop, you, you fucking idiot. Like, just stop. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, shit. Can I say fucking idiot? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I did it again. I won't say it again. I promise I will not say... <laughs> no, 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 no. Umbrella. Okay. Umbrella. S sorry about that. I'm a new father too. This is <laughs> disgraceful. <laughs> Terrible. Um, you fucking idiot. <laughs> nine o'clock. I think I've said enough. <laughs> yeah, we are now on at nine p.m. <laughs> I would say I would want to die with vampire blood in my system. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to I live. I want to uh, I wanna go out like Eva, Evil Knievel on a motorcycle, just flying off a ramp. I don't know why. That's I don't awesome. know how we're going to work that in, but <laughs> that's how I want to go. Davina's died once already. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, how would you like to die a second time? In the, arms, in the arms of Cole. <laughs> In the arms of Caleb. <laughs> Both of them at the same time. He knows better than I do. <laughs> can read your mind. You can read your mind, young lady. <laughs> okay, I'm done, I, I promise. You said oh, shit, I was hoping you guys would forget about... Um... <laughs> I think it would be really cool if uh, if Davina took me out. If she went uh, hella dark and took me out. That'd be funny. It'd be fun. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, Julie. <laughs> Julie, do you have an answer? <laughs> what, how I'm gonna die? How how you would want to die? How you're gonna kill us <laughs> like all off? Death by Twitter, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have my I have the list. Gotcha. Locked away in a safe. Wow. Really dark. Wow. It's 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 ugly. <laughs> Very sad. You? I want to go out like Papa Tunde. <laughs> I want it to be my choice, my time, and then I want to infuse my soul into a blade that causes suffering to all my enemies. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah, that is dark. That is really dark. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Next question. Hi, I'm Maeve, and um, I just wanted to ask, is there anything that will be happening romantically between Klaus and Camille? Oh, people are cheering! Yeah, no, I'm kidding. You, get, you answer this. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't write the show. 
I, right, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that, you know, in the beginning, when we, when we were putting the show together, the part of Cami was listed as a romantic interest for Klaus and possibly Marcel, but I think it's evolved beyond that now. She's more like his therapist, isn't she? Although, yeah, they do have those... Hey, come on. They do, they do have those, um, those moments. <laughs> Couch time. Those, uh, you know, the, those sort of fleeting glances or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We've certainly been building it for a long time, so maybe, yeah. We'll so the real see. question is, why did you walk away, like, in that scene, <laughs> in the season finale? Like, we were so close. Why, like, did, I? why did I? Why did you walk away in that Because I was reading my script, and... <laughs> <laughs> And, and after it, it. her line, it said, Klaus walks away. And so I thought, I'm better go then. You know? <laughs> what was that? Okay. Yeah. Good question. I think we have time for one more question. Hi, my name is Melissa, and this is Lila, a big H2O oh. fan. Oh. And unfortunately, our question on which creature you would prefer to be has been taken. <laughs> uh, glad to hear that some of you prefer to be mermaids. <laughs> but my question mermaids. is for Daniel. And, uh, oh yes, I'm talking to you, <laughs> Mr. Wickham. The bad, bad Mr. Wickham. Um, I would like to know if you would ever consider going back to Bollywood or going back to Jane Austen. Ooh. I'd love to go back to both. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm pretty occupied <laughs> right now yeah. between uh, being a father and, and, and doing this show. But yes, I would love to do both. I, lo I particularly loved um, uh, traveling through India. It was, it was sort of one of the most heartbreaking and beautiful things I've ever experienced. But yeah, I would love to go back to both things. And, and to, do, to do Jane Austen would be, um, would, would be amazing. I'm awesome. learning all this stuff about you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you to the cast of the originals.